All right, I'm gonna go through another uh, product modeling just so you can get an idea of different shapes, different ways we would attack different items. Uh, this is a students from a few years ago that did one. Um, it turned out pretty well. Uh, you can see he kind of he made Sebulba hand soap, Sebulba Pro-V and conditioner, and then body cream. Uh, eventually we'll be making our own labels and stuff. Right now we're just kind of focusing in on the modeling portion of it. Um, so having a variety of things definitely helps. Um, so I'm going to show just a couple different ways we can model some uh, different organic type shapes. And again, these are ways that I attack it, I approach it. I definitely recommend looking at different videos, seeing how other people are modeling things. Um, you'll kind of find your own way as to how you like to model stuff. As long as the end product looks realistic, that's all we care about. So for um, anything that I build like this, I typically start off with a cube and I'll go from there. So I'm gonna basically get this into my rough proportions. I keep everything centered so I don't move it away from the uh, midpoint. Um, I can move it up in the Y direction just so it's sitting on the ground, but I typically won't like pull it away from the X or the Z, that way everything stays right there. So this has given me basically just a rough shape of what that would look like. And then I'm gonna start adding in some uh, divisions. So I need to hit C, and then I can start using my edge loops and start adding edge loops around. Anywhere there's a break in the surface where there's like a cut or something, that's where I want to add an edge loop or uh, a division or something like that. So there's one about here. Doesn't have to be perfect, just about there. And there's also one about here. <clears throat> now in order for me to get this to uh, curve in like that, I'm gonna have to put in a bevel and some other stuff. Uh, but before I get too detailed, I wanna make sure I get this rounding happening first. If you look at it from the frontish view, a lot of these bottles will be tapered somewhat. So like that, or like this. Either way, it's gonna be the same exact process. Um, eventually, I'm gonna put a subdivision on this. So that's what it's gonna look like. Uh, but until then, I need to get kind of that shape. So I'm gonna add a couple divisions, let's say one near the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna add three here. Actually, two might be good enough there. And maybe just, come on, one right here. And I'll set this one to 50%. Okay, the more divisions I have in my shape, <clears throat> the blockier it's going to be. So as I smooth this, you'll see that I'm able to create this really blocky like shape. So I'm gonna hit undo. And now I'm gonna start going through and just adding some tapering to this. So I'm gonna add a uh, rectangle selection. I'm going to scale it in the X direction here, scale it in the Z direction there. And then I'm also gonna grab this row and I'll scale that out just a hair. <clears throat> Not much, just a little bit. Same thing this way, a little bit. And then and I'm gonna have it kind of bulb out at this point so I'm gonna grab those points and pull them out. Kind of looks like a tombstone, but that's fine. <laughs> or a casket, yeah. <clears throat> that's fine, we're killing our hair anyway, so. <laughs> there we go. So something like that. <clears throat> if I find a good shape that I plan on using, like this one here, um, this one is pretty much the same shape as that one, just upside down. So I could always just flip it and start creating it uh, based off of that. Um, if I don't like where this is heading with the way that's laid out, maybe I'll just grab whoops, this row and just scoot it down. And then take these rows and just scooch them out. Okay, so now I have just, again, a different kind of shape uh, than what I started with. So, do, uh, they, those could be two items. they could be. They could be two different items that I'm creating <clears throat> or the starting point of two different items. Um, or I could just say, you know, I'm gonna go with this one and get it to completion and then do something totally different for the next one. Um, you'll find a lot of these kind of product shapes. It's pretty much the same thing, if you, especially these. 
if you just look at like that line there is the same here and the same there, it's just a matter of where it's placed and how big it is. And the same thing for the bottom, it's just a matter of where that's placed. So you can reuse a lot of the same technique for a lot of different shapes. Um, this one here too, like there's no point in modeling three of these things. It's pretty much the same one, it's just different sizes. All right, so let's say that this is where I'm gonna be starting with this one. So this will be like a shower gel type thing. So I'm gonna add in a, uh, another division down here. Let me turn off my subdivision. So this is where it's going to flip open is right uh, there. And then what I'm gonna do is just go to, let's say the face is here. And I wanna select them all the way around um, like that. Then I'm gonna go to extrude and just extrude it inward. So now I have just a little dividing line right there. So that's where it's going to be like the um, flip top type thing. If I need to give it a little bit different shape, I'll maybe I'll grab the faces here. If I can grab it there. And what I want to do is create that little recess, the thing that you put your thumbnail under. As I pull this up, it's pulling way too much of this. That could work, uh, but I think I want to kind of isolate it a little bit more so it's more of a, of a rounding. So I'm going to add in a couple more divisions. Let's say one about here. We'll put this one at about 5%. And then one about here, 95%. That way it's even. Then I can grab that face, and then I can scoot it up, and you'll see how I've isolated that morphing or that modification right to that zone. I'll turn this back on, and then you'll see how we have a little bit more of a dip there. Now one thing we'll have to keep in mind that as we're working on this, it's going to be too rounded in a lot of these spots bevels are what's going to kind of pull the shape out of it. So this isn't the final product. This is just getting me to that final product step. So I'll turn this off again. I'll go back to here. And then I'm going to start to add in some bevels. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to my edges. I'm going to select all this, all this. And you should do all your bevels at the same time if you can. Um, I'm going to go here and here as well, here and there as well. Done. Okay, and I want it to go all the way around. Even though I don't need this beveled, I want that to go all the way around because it just creates cleaner geometry. Okay, MS, zoom in, add a little bevel. That's good. And now let's see what it looks like with the subdivision on. And now we have a a uh, tight little area right there that we could get our thumbnail under to kind of pop that lid open if we needed to. Um, that's cool. Now you'll see that it also uh, blends in right here, like that bevel is coming in right down the middle of this. So that might not be something I want. So if that's the case, I'm gonna go into all of these points. Make sure I grab the cube, make sure I grab the points. Um, gonna go grab these. Sometimes it helps if you change this to ice, um, not ice farm, wireframe mode. There it is. Wireframe, lines, there we go. And now we can see straight through the model so we can grab all those points on both sides. And maybe I'll grab just these first and then scale them out. Uh, we should be able to, under the modeling axis, Object access, yes, yes. Where is that option? Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scale this out. And I'm gonna grab these ones and scale those ones out. And then by scaling them outward away from each other, it just blends that in a bit more. And I'll do the same thing to these ones. Same thing to this one. Go back to my shaded, turn this back on. 
and now we don't see those lines coming up the middle like we did a minute ago. All right, so uh, last thing I need to do on this one is maybe just fix this cap. It looks a little bit too blocky, or a little bit too soft. Um, so I'm gonna add maybe just a bevel around this side here. And this one's fine doing separately because it's kind of like its own, um, its own piece. So it may be thicker than the previous ones that I had on the other sides of this. So maybe three divisions, yeah, that looks good. And then the subdivision surface. There we go. And maybe I'll just act, uh, make that a little bit more apparent. I think that could be just a little bit more scooched up some. Uh, if you're not sure of like what to bevel, what to move, you know, any of that kind of stuff, um, there's no harm in saving a version out, which I'll do lots of times before I do anything that's kind of like critical. Uh, I may duplicate the shape so I don't ruin the original one. Um, I think too, I may insert an edge loop going across here and going across there. I think that might give it a little bit more hold. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good, I like that. Okay, so there's one of my shapes. Let's just call this shampoo bottle. Uh, actually, um, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, no, that's shampoo. I think shampoo is the one that's always upside down, or usually upside down. Yeah, no, shampoo is right side up, conditioner is upside down. In Pantene world, so um, this would be conditioner. Right. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate it and just shove that over here. And then on this one, let's say I wanna add a little bit more definition to it. So if you look at some of the bottles, you'll see things like this, where they have these lines that are cutting down uh, or they have something like um, this, but this is kind of like indented inward. You probably have seen those before. There you go. Kind of like this Dove one. I don't know if that's actually indented or just part of the label, but some bottles are like that. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna go and pull this out of the subdivision, and I'm gonna clean it up before I do any more work. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of all of those bevels that I just did. So I'm just going to double click. It is in there. And let's see, that one, this one. Oops. So by getting rid of these bevels, <coughs> it'll kind of get me back to that state of before I did any of that. It'll give me less divisions. And then I can really focus on the overall shape before I get too heavy into the other modeling. So I'm just going through and trying to figure out what's absolutely necessary for the shape. And then I can start clearing some of that stuff out. And again, if you're not sure, just delete something and then if that's not it, then undo it. That's fine there. All right, that should be good. Okay, so I'm gonna right click and say dissolve and that dissolves all of my bevels. So now I'm gonna go to my points here. I'm gonna go to, I think these points should probably be spread out a bit further. And I don't like how they're spaced. So I'm gonna jump into, let's say front view or something. Oops. And then just scoot those over so that they're evenly spaced. At some point, it may be easier to take this and just mirror it to the other side. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cut it in half. Make sure this is at 50%. I'm gonna delete half of it. So I'm gonna switch to a view that I can see it dead on. Uh, make sure my options say tolerant, yes. And now I can delete that, okay. Now, if I do delete this, I need to re-mirror it, connect everything back together, so I'm gonna make sure that this edge is perfectly flat. All right, so I need to make sure that this edge is perfectly flat, 
So I scale it in to 0%, I go to my front view, I make sure it's exactly on that center line. I can see it's just a hair off, so I need to turn on my snapping. Oops. I close that window. And window. Uh, shift S to turn on my snapping, make sure work plane is on, make sure grid point, make sure grid line is on, and I snap this right there. All right, so now it's perfectly in the center of the scene. Now I can use that symmetry. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna touch this symmetry yet. Eventually I'll come back and tweak it. But with this currently set up, I can basically model one half of this and then don't have to worry about the other half. So then as I go through and I grab, uh, let's say, this edge here and I move it, let me turn on my wires so you can see it. As I move this, you'll see how it moves that other side. So that way I don't have to worry about scaling both sides, I can just scale the one side, just move the one side over. All right. So I'm gonna come down here to the lid, I'm gonna maybe spread these a bit further apart. Same thing on this side. Maybe this one as well over and up and probably the other line right there if I can grab it there we go All right so the smoother your edges are the more evenly spaced they are the uh, smoother that surface is going to be so you have to be under control of every single point and line and uh, face you add to this. Otherwise, it's just going to turn out horrible. Um, that's good. I think this one, maybe I'll even make this a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to grab these and pull it down. And then I'm going to combine everything together. So I have my symmetry, so I'm going to hit C. This will actually create one shape. Okay. Then I need to grab all the points and then right click and say optimize. And this will glue everything together. Before I optimized it, you'll see that there's extra like points hanging out. <clears throat> also where they came together, these are actually separated pieces. So you'll see how well, that should have been separated. No, it didn't separate them, but typically they are. All right, so I'm gonna optimize it nice and clean. Okay. So now what I can do is take these faces here and I think I need a little bit more control over this. I need a couple more edges. So let me add another edge loop. Let's say here at 50, there at 50. That way they're in the same spot on both sides. Come down here, that's probably good there. And then I'm just going to scale this line so that it's perfectly flat, like so. All right, so now I can grab the faces here. And then I'm going to go to extrude inner and pull this in. Then extrude regular and push it in. And now when I put a subdivision on it, and I turn my wires off so you can actually see it, you'll see how we then have like this little indent on there. And then I would go through and just bevel out all the other stuff. So undo my subdivision, and then just start adding bevels in all those areas where I want it to be crisper. So I want this crisper, I want this edge crisper, this edge, all the stuff down here, all the stuff here, and all the stuff there. And also on the top. Oops. subdivision back on and there we go. OK, 
right? So now I would have number two done, and then I could call this one shampoo or conditioner or whatever. Now you may also want something that has a rounded piece on it. So some of these like this would have a rounded cap or rounded something, and then you have the bottle. If it's a fully solid bottle like this, where you don't see through it, I can pretty much just model the bottom part and then just put a cylinder on top of it and just make it look like it is like that. In some cases though, you may want it to be transparent or it may be part of the design that uh, it is rounded on the top of it. So for something like that, I will start off with a cylinder. I'll drop down my divisions to like 12. I'll take my caps off. And I'll basically start modeling it from the cap side down. So let's say there's the cap. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna hit C. And then I'm gonna go to my edges and just grab this bottom edge and then extrude and scale it out. Now, if it's a perfectly round bottle, I can just do that. I can just keep extruding this and then keep moving it down. And then extrude it again. And then let's say scale this in. And then I can right click and say close hole. And then I'll close that hole also, okay? So there's a very quick bottle. Um, I would also want to take these caps here and several things I can do. I just want to see if there's already one in here. Um, I missed. Nope, I got to do the other thing first. All right, so I'm going to do extrude inner. And then I'm going to right click, extrude inner again. And then right click and say uh, weld. There we go. So now this goes right to the middle. And if I do the same thing on the bottom, that will create uh, nice enough geometry there. Extrude inner, extrude inner, right click weld, and weld everything there. Okay. Then I can go through and add in my bevels. Here, oops, before I do any bevels, let me just duplicate this because I'm going to need it again. So there, 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 and there, and there. Little bevels, drop a subdivision on it, and now we have this nice smooth shaped surface. It's huge compared to these ones, but that's fine. I can always scale it down. Now let's say I didn't want it to be perfectly round. Uh, because we have so few divisions on this, um, it's actually not a huge deal. All I have to do is uh, leave these ones up here alone, even this one, and I'll just grab these and then just scale it. So if I scale it like this, now I'm creating something that has a rounded top and then more of an oval or oblong bottom. Uh, I may even want to grab the points and I'm going to grab opposite points here, so this one and that one, and scale it out. This one and that one, and scale it out. Jump to the other side. Jump to these ones. And if I wanted to grab, let's say, um, my knife tool, add a couple divisions here. Modeling is not just about knowing exactly like what tools to use. It's just kind of figuring out what, how to create the best form. And extrude that in, extrude this in here. There we go. Now there's the subdivision that looks horrible. Once I add bevels to this, the subdivision will hold up the shape a lot better. <clears throat> Add that, this, that. And you'll see how I'm adding bevels all the way around these areas because these are the areas that if they don't have a bevel there, um, they're not going to turn out nice and crisp. They'll actually be a bit too like soft and smooth. And part of that modeling process is to make sure that everything looks nice and even.
Some areas are hard, some areas are soft. There we go. And now I will take, where is that JPAP? Right there, add a subdivision to that. And I've created it, it's pretty crisp, but then I have these other areas here that are not turning out good. So I'm gonna hit undo and go back to my edges, and I may have gone just a little bit too far on my selection here. So maybe I don't wanna go this far out with my bevel. So let's try that again. Little bevel. Maybe put in one division instead of two, or just zero division. And then see if that turns out better. Yep, it's a bit better. Okay, now to really get those things to go away, all of these, and this is why I mentioned before about getting everything to be quads, everywhere you see edges and faces, each one of these areas should have a uh, four sides. So this has four sides where I made this bevel, but this face right here does not have four sides. It actually has uh, an extra side here and an extra side there. And that's what's causing it to be kind of like really blocky looking. Um, so I need to use my knife tool. I'm gonna add an edge loop right about, let's say there. I'm gonna add an edge loop right about there. And I'm gonna add another loop here and another loop there, okay? Now you'll notice it doesn't go all the way around because of that not being a four-sided, uh, four it doesn't know what to do. So I add those initially, then I use my line cut and I just draw from this point to that line. Use space bar again, this point to that line. And what that's doing is it's taking this area here, which used to be six sides, and breaking it up into four sides. So each one of these faces, that now has four sides. This now uh, will have four sides, just have to do the bottom. And then this should create smoother geometry. The more complex of a shape you create, the more you have to do this kind of stuff. Uh, I didn't create one for this, so I'll have to do that. there and I need one here and the people who are really good at modeling this is what they do they understand where to add divisions where to take them away how to get the shapes to look the way they want them to look and it's very easy to add many maybe too many divisions um, and then you're kind of like shot yourself in the foot because there's too much stuff to try to worry about and too much stuff to fix So let's take that, let's subdivision that. And that looks much better than it did. I just need to then start going through and just tweaking where those divisions are at. So they're not so close to this. They need to be blended more into the surface. So I would grab, I'm not gonna do it to all of them. I'm just gonna grab this and just slide this over. And maybe pull it a little bit forward. So just by doing that one, you should see uh, that looks a lot smoother in that area. Once I do the other ones, then that'll look smoother all over. Okay, and at some point, if, if my skill level isn't there to get these kinds of shapes, I may just say, well, I'm gonna ignore that and just go into something like this, where it's just blocky. Or jump to something like this, where it's a lot easier to hide those um, little pinches that we may have. Okay. Now if this is, let's say, a nail polish bottle or whatever, um, the very last step I may do is just add another cylinder right on top of this. And I'll add a fillet, I'll add a less radius. There we go. And now there could be a bottle for something else, whatever. Okay, 
Um, even these little pumps here, stuff like this, <coughs> uh, very easy to do if you just have the divisions in the right spot. So let me just move this stuff out of the way. Typically I put it on layers, <coughs> but for now I'm just throwing it off to the side. Uh, so for this pump here, um, Um, it's a cylinder, and then there's pieces coming off of it. <coughs> so I'm going to start off with a cube. Uh, I'm going to add a division going this way. And then I'm just going to take this face here and just extrude it outward. And then taper it in. And then by doing that, uh, I'm just kind of setting the stage for how that pump is going to be set up. I'll add another loop here maybe, another loop there. I'll go into my top view and just start to round off these pieces. Uh, first thing I want to do is that one I added, it's not perfectly centered on that line, so I want to make sure this is perfectly centered. It may mean scaling it and then moving it. may have to turn snap on. Yeah, it's right there. Uh, and then I'm going to grab this and this, and I'm going to move it in and scale it in. And so now that's nice and rounded, and maybe I'll grab this point, this point, that point, and that point, and push those in, and scale those ones in. There we go. And then just to create uh, more of that nozzle, I'm going to extrude this out some. Grab the faces underneath, extrude these inner so that they go inwards, and then extrude it upwards so I have an opening. And then if I subdivision that, there's that nozzle. This could use a little bit more work, uh, maybe just tightening up some of these. Instead of a bevel, I'm just going to add an edge loop right here. Maybe two of them. Uh, maybe I'll add one down here too. Be good. And then subdivision that. Much better. Okay, we're not going to really see underneath it, but it's just nice to have. Okay, so now I have that pump nozzle. If something that we create is going to have some thickness to it, um, or some glassy appearance to it, um, like this. We need to build that thickness into the glass as well. So I'm going to use this as my example. Let's pretend that this is going to be a glass bottle here. Um, I'm going to take my subdivision off. I'm going to delete the faces on the very top of this. I think I have one more row out here I want to get rid of. I'm going to go to select and say grow selection. There we go. And then do that again. And one more time. There we go. And I'm just going to delete it. Uh, if this is glass, glass has a thickness to it. I want to um, grab it just like it is and then extrude it so it has some thickness. Make sure create caps is on. Give it a little bit more thickness. No, it's the wrong way. And then a little bit of bevel on the top, a little bevel on the bottom. Little, there we go. And then turn that subdivision back on. And so now we have a glass bottle. Any of the stuff that you would see if you have a glass bottle, you would need to model. Something like this. If this is my bottle I'm going to put in there, even if I put a liquid inside it, I need to make sure that I have that tube in there as well. I need to make sure that I have this little plastic piece on the inside. Um, some of these have springs that are kind of visible, so you may have to do that too, like that one I think does. No, that's just a drawing. So There you go. So this one has a little spring inside, so I would want to actually model the spring. Um, you can use things like a um, helix. Uh, not in here, under spline, helix, there it is. 
I'm going to set it to be the X uh, Z plane. There we go. I'm going to change the amount of angles. There we go. Change the height. Maybe shrink it down some. And then using what we did before on the candy world, um, I would create a circle, shrink it down, and then just use the, always the wrong one, uh, sweep operation inside here. And then that would create that spring. And I can always go back to the helix and always change, let's say, the height, or let's say the radius is 20, 20. I wish there was a way to link those together easier. Maybe go to my circle and maybe make this five. That's better. Um, let's go back to the helix. Let's change the height now. And let's change these radiuses to, let's say, 50 and 50. Okay, so very easily you can make these kinds of things. It's just a matter of knowing which menus to go into. Um, the more detail you have in there, the better it's going to be, as long as everything is high quality. Um, bad 3D models. Mm, let's look for bad 3D product models. <laughs> there we go. So it's very easy just to throw stuff in there and it's going to look like junk. If you don't have proper modeling techniques, um, that one's not too bad. I'm not sure why that's there. Topology. There you go. So here's a guitar. This is bad topology. There's lines all over the place. Um, there's no way that in a bevel would look nice on here. Even if I smoothed it out, it would still look like junk. I want to make sure that this is nice and divided so that it works correctly. Here's an example of a better modeled one um, because everything kind of radiates out from here. Every single one of these, even though they look like triangles, they're actually quads. Um, it's very easy to maybe get too many divisions in your stuff, so make sure you don't. Should have extra divisions there. Here's another one with bad topology. You can see <laughs> crazy stuff happening here, crazy stuff happening there. Now that's a, obviously a character, but it still applies. Um, everything that we're doing, we want it to look nice, um, so we want to make sure that everything is nice and neat. Uh, if you look at a car's wireframe, every single one of those squares is a square. It's actually four sides all over the place. If there's one triangle on here, the highlights don't catch the light right and it looks horrible. It just like it jumps right out. Same thing here. There's no triangles on this. It's all uh, quadrilaterals. I'm not sure everybody's highlighting in this area. Okay, and just like a car, we work off very low resolution and build up, build up, build up until we're at the point where it looks decent. Um, even this, look at how nicely divided this is for a pop can, where the divisions are, <clears throat> where the lines are at. Um, if you look at any wireframe, you should be able to kind of pick apart how they did it because you can see where there's an extrude inner, where there's an extrude down, where there's edge loops, where there's bevels. All of those things you should be able to kind of pick out. Nice clean geometry. That's what you're. That's what you're after. Now let's look down there. Okay. So those are just a couple extra tips to go through your modeling stuff. Um, as far as the product modeling, I won't go through any more modeling pieces. It's the same exact process. It's just kind of like blocking it out and then putting in where you want stuff to be curved and reshaping it. Um, plenty of, of ways that I've shown here that you could utilize those things. Um, the next lecture I'm going to do will probably be based off of starting to do the texturing for it and the lighting. All right, any questions on this yet? <laughs>